ask for a cherry, Mr. Colby. Don't tell me. I know it's a caramel. Here, I'll squeeze it. <laughs> well, with a little whipped cream on your head, you'd look just like a Sunday. <laughs> Colby, that's a wonderful radio you got there. Yes, I've waited five years for it. I can hardly wait for the repairman to come and hook it up. Gosh, it's a beauty. Eight push buttons, and all you have to do is press the blinker. Colby, get this thing off my throat. You keep your hands on that radio. Oh, but Mr. Colby, I'm the handiest man in this town. Even when I was a kid, they called me Kid Texas. I'll never forget when I was ten, there was a gas leak in my neighbor's house. Right away, they called me. So I went down the cellar looking for that gas leak with a candle, a box of matches, and a cigarette lighter. No, but they threw you out of the house. What house? <laughs> uh, but no kidding, I can really fix that radio. Oh, hello, Mel. Hi, Betty. Daddy, are you getting angry again? No, but your boyfriend had better stop his stupid bragging. He's just proving what I've always said. His head is full of hot air. Well, gives him a chance. And who else should give him a chance but those closest to him? That's right, Mr. Colby, and after all, I'm going to marry your daughter. You're going to marry my daughter? You ever thought about me? Yes, but Betty's much prettier. But Betty, Mel can't support you. You need the necessities of life. How do you get them? We'll charge them. All right, all right, you charge. One month, two months, three months, and then what do you do? We'll move to another neighborhood and start all over again. Doesn't everybody? Why? I'd have to be an idiot to let you marry my daughter. Thank you for your consent. Oh, I've had enough of this. I'm going to... Oh, look, Mr. Colby, I've taken all I can from you. Oh, really? Well, you are so bothered. How would you like to step outside? Please, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Betty, now that we're alone... You can't strike Mel. After all, he still may be your own large brother. Well, oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I was supposed to run down to the meeting and see if they'd voted me in. Oh, I'm late already. All right, Betty, you stay here and watch Mel. Don't you let him touch that radio. The repairman ought to be here any minute. Now, don't you worry about it. Goodbye, Father. Oh, well, goodbye, Betty. Aren't you going to say goodbye to Mel? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's one thing that worries me, Betty. With your father hating me so much, you're liable to begin to hate me, too. Oh. No, darling, I always love you. Even though I don't know exactly why. After all, you're, you're not handsome. You're not intelligent. You're not, you're not successful. You're not... Please, Betty, this could go on all night. Well, let's forget about your father for a minute, darling. We're all alone now, and I, I have a much more important question to ask you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this is so sudden. Oh, Betty. Yes, Mel? Betty, I... Go on, Mel. Ask me that question. All right. Betty, can I fix your father's radio? Oh, you stay away from that radio. No, this is my big chance to show off to your father. But, Mel, are you sure you know what you're doing? Betty, how can I go wrong? Okay, here's a book of instructions. I'll start right from the beginning. It says... Follow the instructions in this booklet very carefully, as this radio represents the result of 102 years of extensive electronic research and can be ruled in five minutes by a jerk like you. Betty, your father wrote in this book. Oh, who needs this book anyway? Betty, bring me a hammer and a cork screw. Oh, Mel, oh, it's the repairman. Oh, we don't need him. Send him away. You have to come. Uh. <laughs> Is everything all right, Mel? Sure, Betty, we're all set. But now there's a tube left over. Oh, let's not waste it. Screw it into the chandelier. Oh, let's go. Turn the knob, Betty. Nothing's happening. Well, you've got to give the set a chance to warm up. You see, the tubes are beginning to light up. See, it's getting nice and warm. Hmm. Now the wires are beginning to light up. And hey, now the set is beginning to light up. Shall I call the mechanic? Call the fire department. Oh, don't be silly. I'll call the plug. Gosh, you've ruined the radio. Oh, 
Oh, Betty, this is the darkest moment of my life. Well, it's the same for me, Mel. Well, you're a little better off. I left my life insurance policy in your name. Uh, oh, now, here comes Father. Uh, why don't you try to get away? Oh, it's too late. Oh, wait a minute. Why should I die without a struggle? I got an idea. I'm a born actor. What are you thinking of, Mel? I'll get him back at the radio set and act. Oh, whatever your father tunes in, I'll do. Oh, now, that's ridiculous. Oh, sure, I could do it. I'll hop, I'll hop in back on the set right now. Oh, Father. Oh, we, uh, I didn't expect you back so soon. Well, I haven't finished voting at the lock yet, so I came back. Uh, where's Mel? Well, oh, he's in back of the house. Uh, he's in uh, back. Oh, back. That's good. Well, Betty, I just saw the mechanic's truck pull away from the house. Now I can listen to my radio. Oh, but Daddy... Step aside, Betty. It's time for my favorite program, the Movie Guild Playhouse. And tonight they have two big stars. I'll turn it on. Oh, Shelly, I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, Pepe, do you love me? You know I do, I do, I do. Really? I'm so glad you do. Really, I am. Really. Well, this is dreadful. I want to write to the movie Kill Playhouse people. The glass all led us to 160 South East. I gotta get some music. Oh, yes, please. The harmonica's on. The harmonica? Oh, Daddy, you can. I'll just push the button. And now the house lights dim in Carnegie Hall. The spotlight picks up the conductor as he mounts the podium. Now the orchestra plays the overture from Tristan and Isolde. <laughs> Don't make- 
taking unpleasing breath can lose you friends and alienate people. So ask yourself if you could have this social handicap. Best thing to do is to guard against it. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing. And remember the name Colgate Tooth Powder with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance.
in the AOL chat room. Uh oh, she turned out to be a nightmare come true. <laughs> That's scary, comrade. It took a bunch of penicillin and <clears throat> three trips to the doctor later to figure out that it was a bad idea to meet the girl from the AOL chat room. Yeah. I don't even want to think about it. But luckily, Mr. Dickweed escaped unscathed. I was able to get rid of what I had. And, and I guess that's why they call it penicillin? <laughs> penicillin. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of our dirty comedy and uh, more to the, more back to the grassroots of... Uh, Mel Blanc. Good old-fashioned Mel Blanc. Mel Blanc. <laughs> I can't say his name. <laughs> Too much vodka. Ah. Mel Blanc and his wonderful radio show. Yep, and we're going to do the one now where he tried to fix... A water, water heater. heater. Yes, I tried to fix my water heater. I that remember one day when you came home and it was a mess all over the floor. All too. over the floor, yes. And you, you came to help me fix the water heater. That was one heavy SOD. Indeed, the water heater exploded everywhere. And there was big uh, brown water spots all over the carpet. Oh, what a nightmare. But anyway... Ah, I guess what we'll do is we'll get on with the show. Let's get on with the show. I'm yeah. going off on a, a tangent again like I always do. <laughs> you are ready for it, Let's on. pour another shot of vodka. Yeah. And yeah, smoke another the... cigarette. Yep. Here is the show, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy. On Radio Free. What a You've heard Mel Black as the happy postman. Hello, oh, Mrs. Bang. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Marcy, 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 Marcy,
you do? Sure. There's nothing he wouldn't do for me, and there's nothing I wouldn't do for him. That's the way it's been for five years. We hadn't done a thing for each other. <laughs> oh, no. Darling, look, instead of just fixing them, Lee, convince him you're the one to do all the repairs around the house. Oh, that's easy to say, but every time your father opens his mouth, I, I put my foot in it. I, I mean, well, all I know is somebody's foot is in somebody's mouth, and, well, it's not comfortable. <laughs> oh, your trouble is you're not firm enough. When you're talking to him about the house, stand up to father. You're right, Betty. That's the spirit. I'll stand up to him and say, listen, Mr. Colby, your foundation is loose. Your frame is out of shape. You should do something about that bay window in the front. Honey, that's wonderful. Boy, is he a mess. No. Oh, I mean the house. But anyway, if your father tries to interrupt me, I won't let him get a word in as well. Oh, darling, here comes father. Why, well, don't forget the church is up. Who's on? Don't worry, honey. As soon as he walks through that door, I'll be on him like a tiger. Mr. Colby? Would you be put out if I told you there's something wrong with your house? I've been trying...